This is Marciano Stadium, the home of the Brockton Boxers. And tonight, the Brockton Boxers will face Ursuline Academy. I'm Nubaret Toe, bringing you all the action in the first half. And today, we have a special, a dynamic duo. First half, you guys will have myself, yours truly, Nubaret Toe. In the second half, Peter Zimbor will be taking over the broadcast rooms. So, Brockton Boxers right here, beautiful day, beautiful Monday. Hopefully they will uh, continue the momentum. We're at Rocky Marciano Stadium. It's Jen Caruso out towards midfield. You know, we've been really lucky the past few days. Montron takes a spill of having some real excellent weather for soccer. We are throwing right here. Towards the net. Who go out of bounds. Actually, no, saves an inbounds. Eventually goes out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for the Brockton Boxes. Goal kick right there. Nice header by the boxers out to the 40. Brockton boxers. Bit of a homestand. Next game will be uh, here at uh, facing Bridgewater Arena. Good crosstown uh, rivalry right there. Box of a free kick. 38 minutes in the first half. 40 minute halves. Goes out of bounds. Want to remind all the viewers that we have three channels here on BCA. Channel 9, 12, and 98. Bring you education, of course, what you're watching right now. Our educational channel, our government channel, channel 12, and our public channel, channel 9. Here's Montron. Montron. Now to the 50 now. Swings it, looks for Caruso, can't find her. Goes out of bounds, that saves it. Our last game we covered was actually right here at Marcelo Stadium with the Brockton Boxer football team leading, uh, going into having a victory versus Catholic Memorial. Uh, pretty much a, a dominant game by the Brockton Boxers. Here we go. Scored opportunity right here. Boxers. Threatening right now in the Ursuline zone. And it goes wide left. Exciting um, news. Our next game versus Bridgewater Raynham will be actually combining forces with BTV, Bridgewater Television, in another joint uh, telecast. So really excited about that. So this year, I mean, BCA, we have been joined with WXPR Radio. And now Bridgewater TV. So definitely been an exciting year in terms of uh, different collaborations right here in the community. Boys soccer teams actually um, on the road for a while. They're not playing till next week. Montron threatening. Box have been threatening the Ursuline zone throughout the whole game.
We're going to throw in right here for the boxes. Out to the 50. Out of bounds again. And there you see head coach for the boxes on the right side of the screen. Out to the 30-yard line. Barks is scrapping right now. Looking for anything. Just about 10 minutes left in the 10 minutes into this game. Boxers and Ursuline Academy. Not sure where Ursuline Academy is located. I believe this is the first time they've faced to brought the boxers, at least right here at Marciano Stadium. Miss Caruso dodging, dipping, diving. Shot. Oh, just off the mark, off the right, off the left pole. Exciting sports month uh, coming up for October because this is the only month in sports, professional sports, where all four, um, all four professional sports are playing. You have the baseball playoffs, which is coming up this Friday. You have, of course, football. Hockey season is going to be started this week, and basketball season later on this month. So an exciting October for our sports fans. Fighting for the ball. Takes a spill. No call. And it looks like it's going to be an offside right there. Offsides again. For Earthline Academy, easy call right there. Good call by the ref. Be a free kick right here for the boxes. Here's Caruso. Goes out of bounds. Boxes, I believe, are the throw. No, excuse me, Ursuline Academy. Shot deflected right there. Another shot goes out of bounds. So boxers are definitely having their fair share of opportunities of going to the net. Just um, got to finish. It looks like the boxes right here will have a corner kick. Golden opportunity for the boxes. Strong kick right there. Wide left. Out of bounds. Be another throw in right here. Once again, I'm new Brad Tell. This is Brock and CUNY Axis. Coverage. BCA Sports. With you every single home game. Caruso. Right left again.
just about 25 minutes left in the first half, all tied at zero. See our cameraman Aaron Tebow on the track did a fantastic job. Throwing for Ursuline Academy. Out of bounds, throw in. Nice pass right there. Boxers continuing to be aggressive. As Caruso loses the ball. Shot. Oh, wow. Nice attempt right there. Just off the mark. Another throw right here for Ursuline Academy. And Ursuline Academy just uh, not getting much rhythm at all offensively. Just really struggling. Stifling defense by the Brockton Boxers. I remind you guys, Peter Zim will be taking over in the second half, as we'll be having two announcers announce for each half. Just about midway through the first half, boxers and the Bears all tied at zero. Number 13, fighting for the ball. Goes out of bounds. And the Bears will have a free kick. Shot saved by the keeper. Oh, the save. Easier said. Easier. She made it look very easy, even though it wasn't.
down to 50, goes out of bounds. Be another throw in right here. Once again, Luberato bring you all the action. Brock and Kimmy Axis, BCA Sports. I want to check our, thank our director, Paul Mandeville, doing a fantastic job in the truck. Smartron. Be a free kick right here for the boxes. Boxes want to get something on the board right now. I mean, definitely have, they've had the chances. Just got to capitalize. Corner kick. Goes for the header, but good job by the boxes defending that. Oh, what a move. Boxes with a little counterattack of their own. Here we go. And clearly an offsides right there for the Bears. Aggressive play right there. Number seven takes a spill. Here's our slot academy. Good positioning right here. Shot. Cleared out by the boxes. It'll be a goal kick. Come the boxers trying to be aggressive, get a score on the board before halftime. Montron pushing the ball. Throwing for the boxes right here. Oh, here we go. Dangerous play right here. Oh, what a save. What a move. What a save. Nice job being aggressive. Excellent job. Box has dodged a bullet right there.
free kick right here. So Ursuline Academy finally getting a little momentum on their side, trying to have a few uh, shots of their own. Oh, what a shot. Dangerous right there. Right above uh, top of the net right there. Looking for the cross. Good defense played by the boxes. That's an aggressive move by the boxes right here. Playing very aggressive defense, stifling. Nice aggressive decision making by the goalkeeper. Very fundamentally sound, this goalkeeper for the boxes. Out to his midfield. Boxes. Just about 12 minutes left in the first half. Boxes and Bears all tied at zero. Both teams definitely have their fair share of opportunities, but uh, no one can really capitalize. Shot. Wide left. Strong kick out to midfield. It's Caruso. Goes out of bounds. Shot. Here's Montron. Out to midfield. 
boxers kick it out of bounds. So all tied at zero, just about 10 minutes left in the first half. Boxers had some momentum early on during the game, but uh, having, a, having a tough time uh, putting the ball in the net. Out to the 20. Goes out of bounds. We are throwing again for Ursuline Academy. It's Caruso. Oh, what an aggressive move right there. Ball's loose, though. Ball's still loose. Smart move by Ursula Academy, kicking out about kicking and clearing the ball. Very dangerous right there. Goalie went a little too far out of her box. Ball to 40. At the corner, looking across it. Can't quite handle the possession. Back out to midfield. Offsides again, way offsides. Once again, I'm New Brad Tell. This is BCA Brockton Community Access coverage of BCA Brockton High School soccer. BCA soccer, excuse me. Brockton High Soccer, right here on Marciano Stadium.
throwing towards midfield. It's Montron fighting for the ball, looking to push it up, up the field. Both teams struggling so far offensively in, in, in the first half. His kick. Will she cross it? Can't quite make it. Goes out of bounds. Universal Academy will have a goal kick. Nice shot by Karen Man right there. Aaron T-Bone. On the boxes on the counterattack. Throwing. Shot over the net. So we have about five minutes left in the first half, all tied at zero. A strong kick right there by Arsenal Academy. Nice strong kick. Again, our next game we're covering will be a joint broadcast between Bridgewater Television and BCA as Bridgewater Raynham and Brockton High will go at it. Two excellent rivalries and really all sports, um, basketball, football, and soccer.
What a move. What a shot. Save. Come the boxes. Shot wide left. Pox is trying to hurry up here as they know time is uh, of the essence. Less than two minutes left unofficially on the field. Pox is just trying to get one last gas and one one goal before before heading into the heading into half for halftime. Free kick right here. Shot. Oh, just off the mark. Golden opportunity right there. And we're nearing halftime. Got to be maybe another minute left, if that. Here we go as a foot race. Dangerous save again by the keeper. Nice aggressive play. And that's halftime right there. Boxer zero and the bear zero. Oh, oh, all in together now. We can make it better now. Come on, can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. We we'll roll it up. Cause we know how to jump. We we'll roll it out. Roll it out. We know how to skate. We we'll cut it down. We'll cut it down. We know what to eat. We we'll swap it out. We eat healthy stuff. Can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. Can we do it? Do it. Do it. 
Just moving a little and eating better every day can help make you and your child healthier. Search We Can to find doable tips and activities that you can use every day. It is second half action here at Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium. Peter Zimbor and Suzanne DeFalco calling the action, and we are scoreless as we have now entered into the second half of play between the Brockton Lady Boxers and the Ursuline Academy Bears. And through one half of play, Suzanne, it has been a defensive struggle for both teams. Brockton has had the ball substantially more often in Ursuline Academy's end of the field than vice versa. However, all that matters is what it says on the scoreboard. And right now, these two teams are playing even. Indeed, right now the scoreboard says nothing. So it uh, doesn't exactly tell the tale of how much time the ball has been down near Ursuline's goal. So Brockton once again pushing in that direction. And Jen Caruso coming up down there, see if this can cross over. <gasps> that looked to be a good opportunity for Brockton. For a moment, however, excellent save by the goalkeeper for Ursuline Academy, who is doing a fair job through one half and change of play. Indeed, she is. She's been very busy, and the fact that there's no score is a credit to her. Just over 38 minutes left to go here in the game. Keep in mind that, as we mentioned, how much time is left in the game. We are referencing what time it says on the stadium scoreboard, which is available for public consumption here at Marciano Stadium. The official time is kept on the field by the referees, but generally speaking, what is on the scoreboard is within range with what the officials have on the field. Generally, yes. Unless there's an injury, then we turn the clock off for that. But mostly it just runs down. The refs have the official time on the field. Players yelling, Jenny. As Jenny Caruso has the ball. I'm not fooled by the rocks that she got, Suzanne. She is still okay. just Jenny, Jenny, Jenny from the block. You're, you're not fooled? I'm, I'm, I'm not. I hear that. Jen Caruso with the ball right now for Brockton at midfield. Passes it to a teammate. Shot on goal and wide to the right. Who was that who had that particular shot? Were you able to see the numeral? I did not see the numeral, no. Uh, I did not see who did that. It's a festive atmosphere here in the press box. <laughs> not only do we have you, Suzanne DeFalco, joining me here, but your mom, who is also the mom of Andrea Tassinari, head coach for this Lady Boxers team, is uh, joining us here in the press box. And there's chance of Ole Ole coming from way outside. Uh, it's a bus coming in and I suspect it might be the boys soccer team. Perhaps they're returning triumphant from wherever they've been. Ole 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 is a celebratory uh, chant. So I would, I would hope that to be the case. I would hope, and it's uh, given the season that it is, I don't know what other team might be returning at this hour to the uh, school parking lot. So if it is the boys' team, they usually will make their way over here to the stands and support the girls as the game goes on. So I guess we'll see in a few minutes. Perhaps they'll bring the, Euro perhaps they'll bring the Euro chant with them. Perhaps they will. Perhaps they'll bring a winning spirit. We'll get a goal here. For, oh, coming in. Maybe there'll be a goal by the time they go. Oh, takedown. Now, Andrea Tassinari, in her 13th year as head coach for the Lady Boxers, this is a job that she really has a lot of passion for, isn't it, Suzanne? Oh, absolutely. Andy's worked very hard and uh, was definitely a building effort when she first took over the team and, um, you know, works these girls and runs the drills and, and really puts a lot of effort into this. She's now teaching at West Junior High in Brockton, to my understanding. She's no longer a South Dragon. She's a West Wolverine. Oh, I, I didn't know the Wolverines were at West, but okay, she's a Wolverine. That's what I was told their new name is. Ah. Weren't they the Blue Devils or the Devils at one point? Mm. They were the Blue Devils when I first got to West when I was a student, ah. and they changed that under pressure of religious groups who found their name to be uh, devilish to some degree, I suppose. And uh, they became known as the West All-Stars for two years. And I remember when they announced the new name of the school as being the West All-Stars, there was a collective groan of, <laughs> huh? <laughs> From every classroom in the entire school, and they announced it over the loudspeaker, 
as to say this is the worst name that we could have ever thought of <laughs> in our lives. And uh, apparently, uh, Cooler Heads ultimately prevailed after I left, and they said, well, let's change the name again because we're the West All-Stars. It almost makes the All-Star team irrelevant because they're already the West All-Stars. It was a little a little pretentious if you don't, I, I think so. A little presumptive going into each season, and uh, although I guess those groups are now focusing their efforts on Randolph because I'm pretty sure Randolph High are, in fact, the Blue Devils. I mean, how devilish is a blue devil? A red devil. That's, red that's devil. a devil. That's a blue devil. Oh, a nice kick it's a happy right devil. Neve's going to scoop it right up. Blue devil, red devil, you know. My first Halloween when I was a baby, I was the devil. My parents dressed me up like the devil. Little horns and, well, that's cute. <laughs> Depending on the costume, you know, it's cute. What's your favorite Halloween costume from you or kid as we'll be entering the month of October soon? Um... Wow, I don't know. I remember when I was in first grade, I was Lucy from the Peanuts Gang. It was a plastic cape that just went over my coat, and it was a, a mask for my face. That was enough on Halloween when we were kids. Now they've got outrageous costumes for kids. I was Hulk Hogan when I was in kindergarten. Nice. <laughs> Did you take your Hulk Hogan vitamins before you headed out for trick-or-treating? I had a Hulk Hogan hand grip that came with a cassette with some weights and it was Hulk Hogan on the cassette going come on oh wide left from Jennifer Crusoe you put the cassette in as you worked out Hulk Hogan was like come on let's pump some iron you can do it brother <laughs> well that's how you knew it was him that did the recording when he said brother I had it up until a few years ago it was, uh, it was <laughs> pr pretty pretty entertaining going back and listening to the motivational speaking of one Hulk Hogan. You should get into motivational speaking. He could, he would do well at it. Let's get ready for some push-ups. Feel the burn. Come on, you Hulkamaniacs. I just think about Roddy Piper, and I say, how many push-ups is he doing? I do more. And then you think of it like, has Roddy Piper ever done a push-up in his life? That guy does not have a particularly defined physique. Once again, ball in Ursuline Academy's end of the field far more than it is Brockton's. Brockton's threatening the score, but they have not followed up on that threat just yet. Can they follow up on the threat, Suzanne? That is the question. A question which we hope to be answered within the next 32 minutes. <laughs> and eight seconds. <laughs> and that's going to... Oh, still in. Did you ever play soccer growing up, or was that strictly an Andy sort of thing? Uh, that was an Andrea thing. Um, Mom, did Mike or Rick ever play soccer? Uh, Rick did for about a week. We bring in Rick Mama. Rick, Rick did for about a week. <laughs> Rick played soccer for a week. How, what's Rick doing these days? Um, he's, oh, 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 tumble, hello. No, he's not tumbling. Um, <laughs> Rick works for a lighting company. He actually, both my brothers played baseball when they were kids. Andrea did the soccer, and my sister Elaine and I danced. Well, Rick, if you're watching, we want to say hello. Rick from the lighting company? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that Rick, right. You've met him. <laughs> Caruso again. Nice. She still got the ball. Still has control. Barreling through defender. Shot on net. That's going to be... Widen a little bit high. The lighting here at Marciano Stadium is fantastic now that the sun is completely set. Your brother Rick would be proud. Sure. <laughs> of the lighting? Oh, oh, yes, okay. <laughs> wow, that went right over my head. <laughs> what other siblings is there in your family? I am the oldest of five. Andrea has a twin sister. And then there were two boys. Do you find that being the oldest, that a lot of your siblings got away with more growing up than you ever did? <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? Absolutely. I, I broke them in. Mom and Dad, I broke them in. You're all welcome. <laughs> what do you mean you're dropping him off at the mall with his friends? <laughs> I 
I, I'm the oldest in my family as well, Suzanne. We were the child children. You were the what? We were the child children. Like, we're the child first, children? the trial children. Oh, trial children. We're trial and error. They kind of know what to do by the time they have the third one. Yeah, With exactly. us, it's like, well, you know, uh, mistakes will be made. Mistakes will be made. Um, but, you know, we, we came out of it okay. You're one of how many kids? Three? Three, yes. Three. We came out okay. Christmas is, Christmas is a pretty good time at our house, so we came through the childhood okay. <laughs> how about you? I think I'm all right. I think so. Do you have a brother or sister? I have a brother and a sister. 29 minutes left to go in this game. We are still scoreless between Ursuline Academy and Brockton. We're in the final quarter of 2013. Suzanne, a holiday a month. <laughs> October, <laughs> Halloween, November, Thanksgiving, and December, of course. Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, <laughs> also Festivus. Festivus, can't forget Festivus. Can't forget Festivus. I spoke of that just the other day to someone. We were saying Festivus for the rest of us. I always fared quite well at the feats of strength. Did you? <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <laughs> you good at the airing of grievances? <laughs> Mom, am I good at airing grievances? <laughs> There was a roll of the eyes and a no comment. <laughs> so outside of Andrea and Rick, what are the other two siblings' names? Uh, Elaine and Michael. Tell us about Michael. Michael is um, an air traffic controller and the father of two beautiful little girls and great dad. What does Michael do for a living? Where does he do it? The air traffic controller is at Logan Airport? Yeah, mm -hmm. he's an air traffic controller. Did you ever find yourself in a rowboat with Michael? In a row. Peter, honestly. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> but I'm sure he'd have rowed the boat ashore if I asked him to, so. Hallelujah. Twenty-seven minutes to go in this game. Caruso, she's gonna let that one slip by, and it's gonna go out of bounds. So Elaine was a dancer along with you growing up. Yes, she was, and now she teaches theater. <laughs> Where does she teach theater? Central Michigan University. Go Chips! Fire up Chips! Do you go to Central Michigan sometimes to visit her? I do indeed. I was there just in July. What's the vibe like in Central Michigan? It is actually a really cute little town that they live in. There's a lot of park space. Um, it's great for the kids. They get the fall leaves changing color like we get here, that kind of season. So they're really in a nice area. A little too far away from us, but they're really in a nice area. So, How far from Detroit is this? Oh, probably about a two-hour drive from Detroit. <laughs> How I'm, I'm being told by my mother, two and a half. <laughs> How far from Canada? Detroit like borders Canada, basically, or Michigan, I should say. Kind of, yeah. Um, not sure, actually. So we're learning about Elaine. We know about Andrea. We know about Michael. We know about you. What sibling are we missing? Rick, the one who works for the lighting company. Ah, oh, Rick. Rick, yeah. We can't forget Rick. <laughs> now, is Elaine a twin of Andrea? Indeed she is. Do they look alike? No. <laughs> You would never pick them out as twins. Oh. Narita Montron got a little green around her, trying to work the ball down the field. Sends it over to, can't see the number on that jersey, number four, who's Ariana Almeida. 25 and a half minutes left. A lot of back and forth in this game. Very exciting. I'm sure it's exciting for the coaches standing there wondering. <laughs> when something's going to happen. Not a huge kick there. Brockton able to keep Oh, Jen Caruso charging at it again. She wants her goal. Jen Caruso actually had four goals in the game against Pembroke. 
That was a 5-1 to one victory for Brockton. And Jen actually got the two goals against Durfee, um, which was actually down in Fall River. A very impressive win, 2-0 down in Durfee. Always a tough team, always good to get a big three win. Discussing this on the broadcast in our last game, have you ever seen a high school coach get a yellow card or get ejected from the contest for their behavior? Um, I can't think of it ever happening in the game we've broadcast, but I, I, I'd adhere to you on this because I think you've been to far more games than me. I don't think I've ever seen a coach get carded. I mean, a yellow, a yellow I, I guess maybe in all these years, maybe. I, I think I'd remember a red because once it's red, they have to leave the field, don't they? Don't the, the coaches, yeah. They They're ejected. They're out of here. Oh. Off the bar. Close, but no cigar. And have we got a timeout? We've got a timeout being called by Ursuline. And, Peter, I'm sorry to tell you, but the orange shorts have been covered by black sweatpants or perhaps track pants. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alicia 40 for the Ursuline Academy team, who is coaching this team tonight in John Forte's absence, was wearing bright orange shorts. But today she is uh, wearing black sweatpants in the second half. It's a little too cold for her to continuously rock the orange shorts for the entire duration of the game. Mm -hmm. Being told that last Saturday the backup goalie for Brockton got kicked out for not wearing shin guards. I, I would think that would be foolish not to wear shin guards in a game because if you get kicked in a shin, well, that would really, really, really hurt. I, I would imagine so, but I'm wondering if they put the backup goalie in. How did it come to their attention during the game that the backup goalie didn't have shin guards if she wasn't playing? Hmm. An interesting question. Perhaps there will be an interesting answer. Uh, it feels like fall to me, Suzanne. I'm a big fan of fall. You get pumpkin coffee and football. That's about it. That's what I like. I'll go for a hot chocolate. I don't really like coffee, but I like pumpkin coffee. See, I've never been a coffee drinker, and I don't particularly care for pumpkin, so... <laughs> I've never been a coffee drinker, but for some reason, the pumpkin coffee, I can't get enough of. You like what you like. But they don't taste like apples. No. <laughs> but we, we like. You're right. A break from the timeout. It's a reference to an Apple Jacks commercial in the 90s. I didn't know it. You didn't know that? I, I guess I missed it. Why do you guys eat those? They don't even taste like apples. And the kids just go, hey, we eat what we like. Oh, I see. Okay. I guess that backup goalie came in during the second half and did not have shin guards on. He kicked her out, said, no shin guards, no play. Jennifer oh Crusoe. Jen 
Caruso with an opportunity. Goal! Jennifer Caruso. Rocked in goal by Jennifer Caruso. And with that, Brockton takes the lead one to nothing with just over 21 minutes left to go here in this game against Ursuline Academy. You knew sooner or later Brockton would punch that one in, and you figured there was a distinct possibility it would be Jennifer Caruso considering with how often she has had the ball in today's game and how well she has maneuvered it through multiple Ursuline Academy defenders, Suzanne. Indeed. I couldn't have said it any better. Jen has produced for this team. She's done very well, and that was a great, great wide-open shot she took. What year is Jennifer Crusoe in now? Uh, Jen is a junior. Seems like just yesterday she was a freshman playing varsity. Time flies. The good thing is we still got a whole another year of Jennifer Crusoe left to watch. Indeed we do. I was once in line at Subway, and behind me in line was Jennifer Crusoe. And her dad, Peter Crusoe. Oh, okay. So I knew it was Jennifer Crusoe because I recognized her dad. I see. I got the sweet onion chicken teriyaki. I don't know what they got. Oh. Uh, did you enjoy it? <laughs> it was delicious. Oh, well. Then it was a good day. It was a good day. Go. I didn't even have to use my AK. <laughs> Today was a good day. Your AK? It was a reference to an Ice Cube song. Oh. You didn't get that? No, I'm, I'm not up on my Ice Cube knowledge. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is 1994 Ice Cube. I thought that I thought we would just hit that right. No, no, I was. I'm, I'm aware of who Ice Cube is, but um, no, I'm not familiar with the lyrics. I don't have an AK for the record. Well, Ursuline Academy now has to respond now that Brockton is on the board. One to nothing is your score. Brockton has a lead over Ursuline Academy. Under 20 minutes to go now in the first half play. And once again, the ball is just always at the end of the field where Brockton's in scoring position. Caruso, shot on goal. And that is saved by the goalkeeper for the Ursuline Academy Bears. Shot on goal by Brockton. Oh, and she nailed it from about 30 yards out. Is that number four? Holy mackerel, number four for Brockton, Ariana Almeida. Brockton goal by Ariana Almeida. Can you spell impressive? I-M-P-R-E-S-S-I-V-E. You know who else can spell impressive? Ariana Almeida, because that was impressive, folks. That was awesome. Ursuline Academy back in the huddle right now, saying we're down 2 nothing now. What do we do? What do we do? I, you, offense. 2-0, <laughs> your score. Brockton on top. 18 minutes left to go in this game. Brockton pulls ahead here in the second half. Game just got very exciting in the last few minutes. Oh, Brockton has been struggling, struggling to get that ball in the head all game, and then bang! Boom. Pow. Boff. <laughs> I'm thinking of the old Batman show. <laughs> Good old Adam West.
Caruso with the ball again. Oh, look at how she just maneuvers through defenders. So impressive. Oh, no. She's going to another shot on goal. You just, oh, saved. This Jennifer Caruso go, girl, she, she is good. She is very, very good. Jen Caruso, uh, when she came in as a freshman, and Narita Mantra, number 10, also showed a lot of promise. Um, the year would have been two years ago when Morgan Bronco was a senior. And Morgan, of course, was such a strong player for the team. So Jen and Narita both were those, those two players that I think uh, Andrea was really looking to, to to be that next forward, that next scorer on the team. And Narita's had a number of goals for herself as well. But, yeah, great game for Jen. And uh, a couple of different players coming in now. A little swapping on the field. Is Jennifer Crusoe taking a breather? It looks like she is. And uh, a, a well-deserved breather. Absolutely. The Bronco girls are uh, doing quite well in their post Brockton High soccer careers. Uh, I believe Morgan is up at Southern New Hampshire. She University. is at Southern New Hampshire University, and her right. sister is playing professional soccer in Iceland. Really? I did not know that. Which sister is this? Th is that her brother? Her brother was also at Southern New Hampshire. One of the siblings. There's another sibling playing soccer in Iceland. Yes. In okay, I'll take your word for it. I saw Papa Bronco downstairs, he told me. Oh, you did? Oh, well, if Ernie said so. <laughs> Ernie Bronco, the assistant house master in the Azure Building my freshman year of high school. <laughs> what, what year were you? I graduated in 2005. So you were red building girl, I, I was in the Azure building. Your mom was in the yellow building, she's informed me. Oh, she worked in the yellow building. Yes. When did, when, when did she work in the yellow building? What, what years was that? When did it start? It was like 23 years. No, but you weren't in the yellow at that time. No, I was in the red. Red and then the yellow. I never really went to the red building too much. I only had one class in the red building. <laughs> that was with uh, Miss Baylor, the Latin teacher. I wonder what happened to her, Miss Baylor. I've been told you see her every once in a while. She sings in church. Oh. Is she retired? I, I, I could sense her being a good church singer. Sure. <laughs> she, was a, she was a good church-going woman, I could tell. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, another opportunity to score for Brockton. Opportunity, opportunity, go! Oh. Wow! Brockton goal by Jennifer Caruso. Wouldn't she even come back on the game to do that? I don't know. <laughs> Jennifer Caruso with two of Brockton's three goals as this team leads Ursuline Academy three to nothing. All three goals coming here in the second half, Suzanne. It's been a second half offensive onslaught from these Brockton Lady Boxers. Oh, indeed it has. It has been a goal bonanza at this point. Three goals in really just a few minutes' time. Uh, Brockton really just woke up in this second half. Not that they weren't, you know, making the effort in the first half, but this is just a real offensive push that we're seeing here. There's Narita bringing it up there. Oh. oh. Can Brockton pour on the pain and score again is the question. Well, Lindsay Gomes trying to work her way in there, takes the shot a little bit wide, but... This has to be demoralizing for Ursuline Academy, who played on even terms with Brockton for most of this contest. It's really taken a turn for the worse for them in the last 10 minutes or so. Uh, it has, but it also could serve as a big wake-up. This could be a motivating factor. A lot of back and forth with no score in the first half, so this could be the, the push that they've needed to start pushing themselves a little bit more and see if they can make something happen. Still uh, just under 13 minutes left in the game, so certainly not beyond the realm of possibility for them to get a few scores in. Brockton with a nice game against some neighboring communities this Thursday as they take on the Bridgewater Random Trojans Thursday night here at Columbia Field at Marciano Stadium. Oh, what was the score? Uh, who's that? Brockton boys. Who'd you beat? Huh? Who'd you win over? Uh, Walton. Walton, three to nothing. Brockton wins. We, we, we've been informed that the Brockton men's boxers team defeated Waltham today by a score of three nothing. And as a result of that, multiple members of the men's boxers team are in the crowd right now, and they're gloating, and they're they chanting woohoo. 
They earned that woohoo. Come here, sir. Come here, sir. Uh, first things first, I, I would like you to be careful while walking up the stairs. Uh, tell us your name. Jason. Jason, you almost fell up the stairs walking up the bleachers. Are you okay? I'm hurt. You know, I, I play very hard against the game wall team. You know, I'm really hurt. Yeah. Remember the varsity team? Yeah. So uh, t tell us how the game went and tell us just about the entire the entire festivities. Yeah, you know, um, we started a little... A little soft and we get in the game, you know. You know, JC Anson scored a goal, nice header, and then let the boxes 1 0. And then my, my friend Jalen scored a goal, and my friend Ronaldinho scored a goal. Let's bring Jalen in. Jalen, hey, come, come on in. We've got Jalen, who also was a big part of the Brockton team's win over Waltham earlier today. Uh, the men's team, we should mention, we're watching the girls' team, obviously. Uh, tell us about your performance against Waltham earlier. Uh, I think I had a pretty good, strong game at uh, right back today. You know, had a nice assist from my friend Anderson over here, able to put away the goal. You know, bring it up to two nothing, and uh, I think we just played all around good game. Well, thank you so much for that, Jalen. I, I don't think that this interview would be complete without some words from Anderson. Anderson says he's scared, but Jalen, you say, don't be afraid. Get over here. Come on, Anderson. Come on, come on Anderson. Oh, Anderson, come here. Come on, Anderson. Thanks. You have a voice? He says to me in a perfectly clear voice, he has no voice. You can't lie to me like that, okay? Anderson, uh, tell us about the performance today against Waltham. Um, we played hard and we did our job. You don't sound like a guy that lost his voice. Why do you lie to me? No, we were doing a lot of shibuyas on the bus, so my voice is a little. You guys were saying ole, 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 it appeared. Yes, that's our typical winning chant, I guess. Can you give us a little ole, ole, ole for our listeners right now? Anderson, come on, let's go. <laughs> Anderson, you barely gave us any. That was all Jalen. It's your turn. <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. You can't. Don't lie to me again. <laughs> Come on. Ole, 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 ole. Oh. Wait. Hello? <laughs> Come on. All right. Well, the, the, the men's boxers team was victorious against Waltham. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, and congratulations, Anderson, Jalen, and uh, congratulations to all, to all of you guys, and we wish you the best of luck as you progress in the season. I remember the JV team just started fixing his hair as if he was on camera, but it, it was he was not on camera. Yeah. Yeah, don't get in front of that camera. They seem like a fine uh, bunch of young student athletes, Suzanne. They do. They seem very proud of themselves, and they should be. That's a great victory to have, and spoke well of it and, and good for them. Congratulations to the boys. The Lady Boxers are hoping to mirror uh, the boys teams win over Waltham today by a score of 3 nothing. They lead 3 nothing over Ursuline Academy right now. This could be a dual shutout. I indeed it could and what a, day, what a day that would be for the Brockton Boxers. That would be a good day. In, it looks like a good day so far. Just under nine minutes left. Chen Caruso once again charging down the field. These kids are going to go home tonight. Watch we'll Monday Night Football or Dancing with the Stars and just feel good about themselves as long as they can hang on to this win. Uh, yeah, hey, enjoy the day. Who are you rooting for in Dancing with the Stars this season, Suzanne? Um, you know, it's only been one week so far, so not really sure who I think is going to take the whole thing, but it's uh, certainly inspiring to watch Valerie Harper perform. Who is Valerie Harper? She had a TV show called Valerie years ago. <laughs> Um, she was diagnosed earlier this year with a tumor and at the time was basically given six months or three months to live and here it is six months later. Um, so She's she, a dancing machine. She Well, <laughs> as much as she can be at 70, however many years old she is, but um, it's, you know, she just figured whatever time I have left, I'm going to spend it dancing. So good for her and, you know, she puts on her brave face and does well and Haley Miller charging down there, sending the ball over to, whoop, denied. Um, yes, so. I never heard of Valerie before, but I, 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 I wish her best of luck. Yeah, I never heard of her. Oh. When was the show on television? Oh, the Valerie was like in the 70s, but then she was the mother on the TV show called The Hogan Family. I don't remember that show either. No, you don't remember that either. That's before your time. <laughs> oh, she was also on Mary Tyler Moore, my mother is telling me. I knew there was another one. I know the theme song to that show. Oh, you do? Yes. <laughs> Would you like to sing it? 
Believe it or not, ba da ba. No, that, that's that's oh, my that's no. The greatest American. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, there was. She's gonna make it after all. Yeah. Yes. I was mixing up my TV theme songs momentarily. What's your favorite TV show theme song of all time? Um. Hmm. Uh, you know, I was a huge fan of the Dukes of Hazard. I like the Blossom theme song. Blossom. 